morning from Kurdistan, Iraq. Today we are getting outside of the capital city. We have hired a guide who is going to take us into the Garan Mountains to see Saddam Hussein's former palace. We are making a lot of new friends and eating some beef. <laughs> we have no bullets happening. <laughs> shoes here. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah, oh, burn, 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 burn your feet. It burned your yeah. feet. Yeah, 50 degrees out. Wow, we have just arrived in the town of Lalish mm -hmm. and it is so holy that you're not allowed to wear shoes in this town. And it's still cold. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the most holy town in the world for the Yazidi people. Did I say that right? Yazidi? Yes. So it is, how often do they have to make the pilgrimage? Uh, once a life. So once in their lifetime, in their life. every person in the Yazidi faith has to make a pilgrimage to this village, to one of the temples in the village. There's locals here all walking around, just barefoot. All the kids Ow, barefoot. that was a big rock. <laughs> I read about this place online and I had a hard time believing it actually existed. A place where you couldn't wear shoes. I just think this is the coolest. Uh, not in the wheel. No, no, no. They don't like you do in Sunday in chairs. No, you yeah. don't have this. But they don't have that. But what they have is New Year. So, 17 to 18 years. This is one of the most fascinating places I have ever been. Apparently it's kind of like Mecca. It's just a place where you make like a pilgrimage to. And so no one actually lives here except for two families and they're in charge of taking care of all the temples. And once per day, they go around the entire complex and they light 365 candles, one for each day of the year. And that's what we just got to see. They said they didn't mind. We were just following them around <laughs> while they were lighting all the candles. There was a guy who had the candles. He was sticking the candles. There was a lady following behind him with smoke. And then there was a third guy who went behind kissing everything that they laid candles on. Yeah, very interesting. I've never heard of no. this before. So one of the reasons this town is so holy is because the Yazidi people believe that this is the rock that God made Adam from at the beginning of humanity. It's kind of hard to be barefoot. I'm feeling really guilty right now. I just accidentally committed one of the cardinal sins in the Yazidi faith. Before they walk into their temples, they kiss the doorstep, but I didn't know that and I stepped on it. My feet where everybody puts their limbs. And Haval's been giving me a very hard time. <laughs> <laughs> we walk over. Over it, Nate. Okay. Over. Thank you. So they have these cloths strung up around the entire temple, and apparently this is the most holy place that you can make a wish in the Yazidi religion. But it's kind of a nice gesture because before you make your own wish and tie a knot, you have to untie a knot that's on the fabric. And that means that someone else's wish will come true. And then you can tie your own and make your own wish. Wish so if it comes true, I can't tell, it's a wish. Why is everything black? It's mud and olive oil. They used to save olive oil to help them to make a fire. They used to save olive oil in this pot. This pot actually is 300 years old. What? Yeah, these are hunting olive oil. Okay, I like this. It's like a competitive game in the religion. So you try to throw this sheet on top of the rock with your eyes closed. You get three times. If you can do it, then your wish will come true. Nope. That didn't sound good. <laughs> Oh, that was really bad. <laughs> no wish today. Very nice. Close your eyes. Yeah. Ready? Set. Oh. A little bit harder. Okay. <gasps> you did it! She did it. I so. forgot to make a wish. <laughs> really? Oh. I just really wanted to make it. You didn't, oh, she didn't make a wish. <laughs> She's 
really concentrating. <laughs> Next time. Oh, I'm so happy. So the tomb behind us is the most holy tomb in the entire Yazidi faith. And there's this really itchy material that it's covered in called harka. And we just learned that in order to become a priest in this religion, you have to wear this as underwear. So you lose the pleasure of life. Is that right? The pleasure of life? Yes. So he can't marry. He has to wear itchy underwear. He has to fast during the hottest days of the year and the coldest days of the year. 40 coldest days in the winter. 40 coldest days in the winter and 40 oh. hottest days in the summer. In the summer, he can get up to, it just keeps getting worse. In the summer, he can get up to 50 degrees here and they're not even allowed to drink water from sunup to sundown. This sounds like the worst. <laughs> Don't step on this. Here we go. Okay. We're going to walk over. Walk over. Walk over. It's very cold and wet. <laughs> We're going up to some viewpoint. The water makes uh, bare feet okay. even more it's uncomfortable. Snowing, no. Really? Yeah, I walk here without shoes. You've been here in the snow. It's snowing, yeah. Wow. Okay, let's go. Ow, my feet have turned into frozen bricks that are, are painful. We have been to a lot of religious sites during our travels, but this one has to be the most fascinating. The most unique, for sure. If you're Who ever knew bored, this you existed? definitely Google. Yazidi. Yazidi, and they're disappearing over time. How about you? Yeah. Apparently you can't join the religion. You have to be born into it. There's no way, like, if you are not Yazidi right now and you want to become Yazidi, too bad. And there are three different castes, and you can only marry within your caste. And there have been 73 genocides done against the Yazidi people. Yeah, they've had a rough. So fascinating. Okay, we're getting in the car. Ooh, it hurts. So we just passed through a checkpoint that was closed for three years because it leads directly to the front line of where the fighting was with ISIS. So from where we are now, it was 15 kilometers to the front line where the Peshmerga were fighting ISIS, trying to not let them take any more of Kurdistan. Is that right? Very good. Okay. So right now we are 36 kilometers away from Mosul, which was basically oh gosh, the capital of ISIS. Right really hurts. So this is the change. This is the border between uh, Peshmer Kurdish Peshmerga and ISIS. Do you see that mountain? The half of mountain was under ISIS control. The other half was under Kurdistan or Peshmerga's control. So after three kilometers, there is a town called Ba'shika. Ba'shika was under ISIS control for three years. Kurdish Peshmerga they liberated Ba'shika, I think December 2016 or January 2017. So now that ISIS has been kicked out of the region, that has actually turned into the border between Kurdistan and Iraq. So to go much further, we would have had to pass through an Iraqi checkpoint, which would have meant that we needed an Iraqi visa, which we don't have. We just came into Kurdistan, got the 30-day free visa. So that was as far as we could go but definitely super interesting to see and not something that I thought we'd get to see on this trip. So if we drive 20 kilometers more, you will see all these ruins, damage, destroyed. Yeah. Every single corner was like this. Yeah. So we were just watching videos of what this city that we can see about 20 kilometers away looks like right now. And it's just crazy knowing that like it's right there and the soldiers we're fighting so that they didn't come and ruin any more. I mean, the, the entire city is ruined. And I just wonder if one day we'll get to go there and see all of the new buildings. <sighs> so you may ask, where is the people right now? So most of them still they are in refugees camp nearby a real province. Yeah. It looks like the entire town is destroyed and we were just getting to see exactly what the eight months of fighting did to the city and it's just absolutely crazy, super sad, but also really encouraging to see the new construction going up in the city. Back to your bill we go. 
Okay. Start spinning. <laughs> Don't stop. Uh, comfortable? Comfortable. Okay, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you're going to be able to sit down. Comfortable? Comfortable. Okay. I think. Wow, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I think it's okay. Right. You think it's too tight? No, I think it's perfect. Okay. Ta da! <laughs> Haval has invited us to go to dinner with his family, which is just a super <laughs> nice gesture. But he thought it would be even more fun if we dressed up in the traditional Kurdish dress to it's go to so dinner. It's so beautiful! It's so fun! And we have his two kids with us, and we all just got in the car together. <laughs> And it's like we're going clothes. to dinner with the fam. I asked him if it would be offensive if we wore the traditional dress, and he assured me that it wouldn't, but we're getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> I love it. To loosen my dress. <laughs> we saw this fish being cooked on the side of the road that they put in this cage looking thing around this bonfire and they cook for like two hours and then they take it off but it's still in this little cage thing and they put it on a grill so it's nice and charred on the bottom. This place also has a really cool story. The guy who started this restaurant started a little street stand of falafel in 1963 when he was 13 years old and now it's this beautiful restaurant. Okay, actually about the fish, uh, usually we didn't have this dish before until 2003. But when a lot of other people, they come from Baghdad, the rich people who brought their business to Kurdistan, because Kurdistan was the only safe part in, in whole Iraq. So a lot of rich people, they came to Kurdistan and they opened business. So we learned to do this dish from them. I love how the meals here are family style. Everybody's just like... Wow. The skin is amazing. It's like salty and a little crispy. It literally just melts in your mouth. So soft. Yeah. You like it? It looks good? <laughs> Thank you. Everyone's so nice. I've never worn a female girdle before, but I feel like now I have a little bit of an idea what it's like. <laughs> After eating all that food, my belt's feeling a bit tight at this point. Nate asked Haval what happens if you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he said, you I don't. don't go to the bathroom you when don't. I'm with you. <laughs> What a day. How do I untie it? <laughs> How do I get out of my wrap? Okay. Easy. <laughs> Okay, I might throw my fish up. <laughs> oh, this feels good. Okay. Oh. This is the equivalent of women taking their bra off at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it is official. Haval is the best tour guide that we've ever had. It is now 11 o'clock. <laughs> Can I can't see my watch, but it's around it's 11 o'clock. Our flight is not until 4.30 in the morning. We told him just to take us back to our hotel, drop us off in the lobby, and we'll just hang out there until we have to head to the airport at like 2 in the morning. And he insisted on us coming back to his house, sleeping for a couple hours, and then him taking us to the airport. Can we just stay all week, of all? Oh, yeah, you, you can stay. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have two toilets, Western toilets. <laughs> two yeah, Western so, toilets. Yeah, and Phil, it's your brother's house, so anytime you want, just <laughs> even for a weekend, anytime yeah. you are more than welcome. Thank anytime. you. So if you come to Kurdistan, and you should. We're gonna leave all of Haval's information in the description below so you can contact him and go around with him. It'll Damn. be the best day you have. This is seriously the nicest thing ever. We insisted on sleeping on the floor and the kids insisted on giving us their room. We're sleeping in their Spider-Man beds. <laughs> Who would have thought? I can't believe we have to get up in two hours. I feel like at the end of this year when people ask what the highlight of 2019 was, I feel like it's gonna be these two days. <laughs> For sure. Like the most unique experience ever. Okay, for real, we're going to sleep. It's... <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Apparently we're next to the equivalent of a ghost. He just left. <laughs> My insides are nice and warm now thanks to this tea, but 
It doesn't help his feet. They're still freezing. <laughs> Cristiano. <laughs> <laughs> Harka. 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 You can say harka. Harka. Okay. Harka. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> oh, that was mud. That's a lot of mud. <laughs> New photographer. He's ordering dinner for Very well. I didn't want me to tie while I was eating. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want my pants to fall down. Are you filming this? Yeah, this is the story <laughs> that you told us in the car. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, let me think about it. Okay, okay.